you could, you could see like dust flying up in the sky, in the air. Like there were, there were like golden rays of sunlight coming through these square openings at the top of this synagogue. And the place was packed with people. It was packed and everybody was kind of talking and you can hear the hum of people talking. And just like their custom was on Sabbath in Israel, everybody would go to the synagogue to hear the word of the Lord. And nobody was at the podium. And so while everybody was talking, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, somebody stands up that was sitting in the back. He stands up. And he's a young rabbi, and he has on the prayer shawl, you can see the tassels dangling, and he has his head covered up with the prayer shawl. And he walks down the middle aisle, and his feet are in sandals, his feet are dirty, dusty, and as they walk, with every step, you can see the dust fly up in the, sky, fly up in the air from the floor, the dusty floor. And as he's walking, everybody's quiet. They stop talking. And they're wondering to themselves, who is that? So it's quiet. And as he's walking, he goes up to the podium and he motions for the attendant. And then the attendant brings him a scroll. And he opens up that scroll and you can hear, it was so quiet, you can hear the papyrus moving and shaking as he opened up the scroll. He had his head down and he took a deep breath and he spoke, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. And so after he finished talking, he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant. And then he walked back down that same aisle and sat down at his seat. And everybody was watching him as he walked. And he sat down. It was dead quiet. He had his head down. And then he lifted up his head and took off his prayer shawl. And everybody could see his face. And he looked around at everyone. He took a deep breath, and then he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. So that synagogue was in a town called Nazareth, and Nazareth was where this young rabbi grew up, and the name of that young rabbi was Yeshua. But we also know him as, what's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Jesus. Now, when he was there, every Sabbath day, he would go and, and go to the synagogue and teach. Now, he, just a few days earlier, he had just spent 40 days in the wilderness being tempted by the devil. And he came back from that competition victorious. He came back in full power of the Holy Spirit. He had Holy Spirit without measure, unlimited power. And his ministry had just started, and he was uh, uh, casting out devils and raising the dead and healing the sick and preaching and teaching, and there was a fame around him going around the area. It wasn't on social media back then, but he was going viral even back then because they wanted to know, who is this man that's doing all these miracles? When he teaches and preaches, it's with power, not like the scribes do, he teaching with power. And so when he was there, he was proclaiming his mission statement. That's what he was there to do, to set the captives free. Liberty means freedom. That's what he was sent to do. And so we're in a series called Who's at the Table, where we're talking about Jesus's mission and what he's come to do. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm just, I just want to be, I just want to be who God created me to be. You understand what I'm saying? Because so many times, like especially living in America, like we get so influenced by social media 
<clears throat> and what people say and what people think, and we watch movies, and everybody has an opinion on how we should dress and what we should say and what we should not say and what we should do and what we should not do. And if you don't do this, then you're not that. And if you do this, then you're not this. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, I'm just tired of that, right? And I just want to be free. I want to be free from distraction, free from all hindrance. I just want to just be like a little child. You know what I'm saying? You know how children are, right? Children don't care. Little kids don't care. They just be running around. They eat whatever they want to eat. They do whatever they want to do. Like even, even like the little ones, right? The little ones be running around with their diapers on and stuff. Like they don't care. Now, I don't want y'all to do that, though. Don't, you know, if, if you grown, don't, don't run around with your drawers on. That's, no. No, 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 no. Now, there's, there's rules to it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're not, we're not talking about that kind of free. Just, you know. <laughs> but we want to be free. Right. Who, want, you want to be, who wants to be free? Really free, free. To be yourself. Not to worry about, well, I can't say this. And I, if I say it like that, then they're going to be mad and... Ah, all that stuff. So basically, it's like this. I titled this conversation that we're going to have, you want to be free? That's a question mark behind that. And I'm asking you, do you want to be free? Do you want to be free? So we're going to get free today. Now, <clears throat> so there was, a, there was a Pharisee by the name of Simon. So Simon invited Jesus to his house for dinner. So Jesus is there. And there's a whole bunch of people at the table that, you know, a whole, whole bunch of people in the house. Then all of a sudden, now this woman comes. She's on her knees and she's crying, like sobbing, crying. And she has this box, this alabaster box, and it's full of expensive perfume oil. Expensive, like it, it, it might have been like her whole year's wages on her job. And she broke that box, and you can just smell the, 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 the aroma fill the air. And she was crying, so she went up behind Jesus, and she's actually pouring the oil on his feet, and she's wiping uh, uh, her tears on his feet. She's kissing his feet, and she's drying his feet with her, tear, with, with her hair. And ladies, I, do y'all spend a lot of money getting your hair done? Raise your hand if you spend a lot of money getting your hair done. Now, you're not going to be so quick to actually dry off somebody's feet with your hair after you got it done, right? That might not be possible, you know, if you spend a lot of money on it. But you know what? She didn't care. She didn't care. Because she loved Jesus. So she didn't care who was around. So she went to him and she was drying her feet with her hair. Now, Simon, who was a Pharisee, the Pharisees were the religious leaders of the day. Simon says this to himself. He looks at her, and then he looks at Jesus, and he says this to himself. He says, you know what? That man is not a prophet, because if he was a real prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him, because that woman is a sinner. So now Jesus, he's full of the Holy Ghost, right? The gift of discernment is working. He's already hearing Simon's thoughts, right? Now, Jesus is a boss. He's a man's man. A lot of times we see in movies and, and, and on TV shows and stuff, you know, like Jesus is real thin and he's always like, you know, shaking and trembling and stuff. And he's just like, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. You know what I'm saying? Jesus was a boss. Jesus turns around and he hears his thoughts and he was like, Simon, I got something to say to you. Come here, let's talk. So now this is the story that Jesus tells Simon. This is Luke chapter 7, verse 41 through 43. And the word of the Lord reads. Amen. It says, then Jesus told him this story. A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to the other. Now, I don't know how many, how, how much 500 pieces of silver is worth now, but just for the sake of today in Abilene, February 19th, 2023, let's just say that that 500 pieces of silver, let's make that equivalent to $500,000, <clears> half a million. And then the 50 pieces, let's call that $50. Does 
right? So you can see the comparison. Verse 42 says, but neither of them could repay him. Neither of them could repay that debt. So he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debts. He didn't just forgive them. He kindly forgave them. Now, I can't speak for y'all. I might be able to forgive the brother that that owed me $50. But the dude that owed me $500,000, I'm not going to be so quick to kindly forgive him of that debt. You know what I'm saying? I might have to like, bro. Come on, come on, player. You got to come up with that money, bro. You know what I'm saying? My, my voice might get high. I'm be like, give me my money, man. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> look, that's a lot of money, man. Like $500,000. But I'm not God. God. God is God. <laughs> so it says here, he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debts. And then he asked Simon, Who do you suppose loved him more after that? And Simon answered, well, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the larger debt. And then Jesus said, that's right. So the first step to being free, if you want to be free, is this. When Jesus forgives us, it brings us freedom. When Jesus forgives us, it brings us freedom. Because in this parable, that was a story that Jesus told Simon. But God did the same thing for us. That sin debt that we owed, it's impossible for us to pay it. It's impossible for us to pay it. But Jesus paid the price for all of us. Yeah. That's true. We can never repay it. No matter how much money you give, it'll never be enough to buy your salvation. No matter how many works that you do, no matter how you fast or pray or do good things, you can never earn eternal life. You can never earn salvation in your own strength. We're saved by grace. Even after you get saved, the relationship is based on God's grace and mercy, not our performance. Grace. So Jesus paid that price for us. Jesus paid the sin debt for us. That's how we become free. One of the ways that we can can become free. Now, no one is undeserving of God's forgiveness. And sometimes that's tough for us, right? Because when you look at the news or you hear about somebody that did something really bad, we get angry. We want that person to suffer. We want them to get punished. Or when you hear of an evil dictator or some other country killing thousands of people and just treating treating all kinds of people bad, we get mad and we say, you know what? I hope that person burns in hell. They don't deserve to be forgiven. But that's not true. No one, no one is undeserving of God's forgiveness. No one. Now, if they repent, no matter how bad they've done, if they repent, sincerely, God will forgive them. Now, they're still going to have to deal with the consequences of their sin, but their sins will be forgiven. So Jesus goes on, Luke chapter 7, verse 47 through 50, and the word of the Lord reads, Jesus says, I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. Then those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, who is this? Who even forgives sins. And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. So he's saying, if you have been forgiven little, then you love him little. Because Simon was criticizing. He was criticizing Jesus and criticizing the woman. But she had been forgiven for so much and she loved him so much she didn't care. That's how we should love Jesus because he paid that sin debt for us that we could not pay. That's why the Bible says you shall have no other gods before me. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Because he's the one that paid the price with his life. That's why God hates idolatry. He hates it when we love something or someone more than him. 
So he says, your faith has made you whole. Faith has saved you. Go in peace. So she went in peace. She was free. Free. Everybody say free. Free. Now, the second way that we can become free is, is this. When we forgive others, it brings us freedom. This is a tough one. It's easy to, forget, to, to get God's love like, oh, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then when it's time for us to forgive others who treated us wrong or sinned against us, it's a challenge. It's a challenge because those are real emotions. A lot of us have been hurt, abused, done wrong, and there's pain there. It's real, but we have to forgive. If you want to be free, you have to forgive and let it go. So this is Jesus in the book of Matthew. He's talking to his disciples. He didn't finish just teaching them how to pray. And part of the Lord's prayer that he taught them was, Lord, forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So, 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 so God's, God's uh, 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 forgiveness of our sin is based on how we forgive others of their sin toward us. Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 through 15, and the word of the Lord reads, Amen. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. Now, that refuse means you have a choice. Everybody say, I got a choice. Got a choice. You can choose to forgive someone or not forgive them. We have to choose to forgive them. Now, if you don't forgive them, it's doing damage to you. It's doing damage to us. And I get it. A lot of times, like, things have happened to us. We've been in, you know, some of us have been uh, 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 treated wrong by our parents, our siblings, our spouses, whatever it may be. Some of you may have been uh, uh, abused when you were a child, and you've been carrying that pain and that anger and that resentment and that memory of that hurt, that trauma, for years. And you're angry. And I understand. God understands. You're angry. You're frustrated. You want them to pay. You want revenge on them. And I understand that. But you got to forgive. Because when you don't forgive, it damages you. And in this age right now, social media, everybody's online, everybody's angry with each other. It's just like it's just, the enemy is just working through separation and, and, and division. Everybody's just, if you don't agree with me, then you're my enemy. If you're not over here, then don't do that. It's, it's a whole bunch of stuff. It's easy to get distracted. But we have to be free from all of that stuff so we can move forward in our purpose and be free and be clean so we can go and do what God called us to do. So you could be who God made you to be. That's why you were created to, to show, to, to, to give glory to God and move in your God-given calling and purpose. You not forgiving someone is like, like, like if I drink poison, like if I drink some gasoline and I drink some cyanide and I eat some rat poison, right? If I drink that poison, and I think it's going to kill the other person. It's not going to work. That's what unforgiveness is. A lot of times we, for, we, we, we think that we're doing damage or we're going to get back at that person by not forgiving them. Half the time, they're not even remembering what they did. It hurts us. It hurts you. That's why we have to forgive. We got to forgive. You got to be free from that prison of resentment and anger and bitterness because it will affect you in your life. So now there's a couple of things that forgiveness does. Now, first thing, forgiveness brings freedom from spiritual bondage. Everybody say spiritual bondage. bondage. Freedom from spiritual bondage. Now, when you don't forgive, that gives Satan, the enemy, the devil, Lucifer, however you want to call it, that gives him a legal right to have access to you. 
Because remember, if you don't forgive, there's some sins that God will not forgive you of. Now, <clears throat> when you first got saved, you asked God to forgive you of your sin and, and you repented and God forgave you of your sin. But after you become born again, our spirit man is new. Our nature has changed. We're not sinners anymore. That old man is died, but we still have an unrenewed mind. We have to renew our minds. So by a show of hands, raise your hand if you have not sinned one time, if you have not sinned since you've been born, born again, say. Anybody? Okay. Now, raise your hand if you've sinned at least once since you've been, since you've been saved. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Because we've all sinned, but thank God for Jesus, because all we have to do is repent when we make a mistake. Thank you, Jesus. So, 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 so when we make a mistake and we sin, we say, God, forgive me. I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry. Forgive me. And God will forgive you. Right. Thank God for Jesus. But when you don't, when you don't forgive, you hold on to that offense. You hold on to that anger and that bitterness. And every time you see that person's face, you get angry. You could be excited. You could be jumping around, having a good time. As soon as you hear their name, you get tight. You get mad. You frown up. You start looking crazy. You start looking at people suspicious. Right? Because the memory, the memory of that person and what they did to you changed your whole nature. That means... That thing, that person has control over you when you hold on to that offense. And God wants us to be free. So if you want to be free, you got to forgive and let it go. Everybody say forgive and let it go. Forgive and let it go. So when you do forgive, when you do forgive, you let go of that offense. That person or that thing has no effect over you anymore. You're free. That's the way God wants us to be. But it's a process, though. So forgiveness brings freedom from spiritual bondage. The second thing, forgiveness brings freedom from bad health. There's some sicknesses and some diseases and some ailments and some aches and stuff going on with, sometimes with us that's directly connected to your unforgiveness. Because when you don't forgive, once again, the enemy has access in that area. So the devil could be like, uh-oh, she didn't, she didn't forgive her mama. I can get in. I can go in there and put some sickness on her. I can give her some cancer. Because she didn't forgive her mama yet. I got it. And legally, he can do it. Because sometimes we don't even know. We just figure, well, I just, I'm just going through this thing. I'm not saying all sickness is like that, but there's some things that you go through is because of the unforgiveness. And it's time to be free. Now, scientific fact. Stanford University is a prestigious university out on the West Coast. There's a professor and a psychologist named Dr. Fred Luskin, PhD. Now, he's an expert in forgiveness training and how it affects our bodies and how it affects life and everything. He says, when you don't forgive, there's increased risk of anxiety, depression, insomnia, It'll have you up all night, and you're more likely to suffer from high blood pressure, ulcers, migraines, backaches, heart attack, and even cancer when you don't forgive. Because remember, God is about the whole man. He's concerned about the whole man. We're made of three parts, body, spirit, and soul. So what happens in our spirit, it affects our soul, and our bodies as well. Then he says, Dr. Luskin, then he says, when you forgive, when you do forgive, he says, in careful scientific studies, forgiveness training has been shown to reduce depression, increase hopefulness, decrease anger, improve spiritual connection, and increase emotional self-confidence. A lot is tied to your forgiving those who sinned against you. A lot of it 
And I know it hurts because you want them to pay. You want, you, want, you want them to know what they did to you and how it made you feel. And I get it. God understands your pain. But you have to forgive because we have to show grace and mercy to others that sinned against us just like Jesus showed it to us. And it's not always easy. Sometimes it's a process. A lot of times it is a process. But it's necessary for you to be free. So if you want to be free, if you want to be free, you have to forgive and let it go. Everybody say forgive and let it go. Forgive Forgive and let it go. So you might have a family member. You might have a, a, a mother or a father who was just a deadbeat. They talked to you wrong. You might have been verbally abused by your mom. Or you might have been physically abused by your mom or your dad or whatever it may be. And you're holding that resentment. You're holding that bitterness and you're holding that anger because you can't forgive them. You might not have talked to them for years. But you have to forgive and let it go if you want to be free. Even in your, 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 your marriage, your spouse, your husband or your wife, they might have said something or done something to you. Yesterday. Or last year, whenever, and you're still holding that thing. You got to forgive and let it go. Somebody might have said something about you, and, and, and somebody might have did something to you back when you was a child. You might have been abused when you was a child, and you've been holding that, frustrated, angry. And every time you see their face, you get angry. Every time you hear their name, you get angry, and I'm not are not just balls up in your stomach. That's that unforgiveness. You gotta let it go. You gotta let it go. Because it's affecting you. You gotta let it go. Everybody say forgive and let it go. Forgive and let it go. go. So how do you forgive? How do you forgive? Now I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert. I know there's a lot of information you can get online about the process, but I know one thing. Forgiveness is a process. And it's not easy. But Jesus can walk you through it. The Holy Spirit can walk you through it. And it's necessary. So I kind of boiled it down to three steps, real simple. The first step, step number one, is you have to choose to forgive. You have to choose to forgive by faith, not feelings. Because if it was according to your feelings, you would never do it. By faith, just like Jesus forgave us, we have to forgive them. It's a conscious choice. You got to choose. Step number two, you got to say it. You have to acknowledge the offense out loud and say, God, I forgive blank for doing this to me. Or I forgive them for doing this. Now, you still may feel it, but at least you're doing it by faith. Because what happens is the enemy wants us to stay silent. The enemy wants us to be quiet and not say nothing. When you name it, you take away its power over you and you call it out. And the third thing is sincerely pray for them. Don't pray on them. Pray for them and pray God's will be done. Pray that God's will be done in their life and pray for them and bless them. Jesus said, love your enemies. Pray for those who despitefully use you. That's tough. That's hard to do. And so here's another thing. Forgiveness doesn't mean you forget. Now, you, for, you, you remember what happened, but you've forgiven them. But now there may be some boundaries. There's boundaries in place. OK, now, if you're in like, say, for example, if you're in a marriage where y'all are together in a marriage, then that relationship can either get stronger after that forgiveness Or it's up to you, it would kind of not be stronger, if you know what I'm saying. But that's still the choice that you have to make. And Jesus can work that out. Jesus can walk with you through that. So, listen, Jesus wants us to be free. God wants us to be free so we can be a blessing to other people's lives. Because if we're holding unforgiving, that means we have resentment and anger and bitterness We won't be able to really, really show the love of Christ to the people that need it. We will, but it's it's gonna be it's something in there where there'll be you wanna be completely a hundred percent free 
to be who God called you to be. And a lot of that comes from forgiveness. And it's a challenge. It's tough. But you can do it. We can do it with the help of the Holy Spirit. In 2018, in Dallas, there was a a young black man, and he was in his apartment. And he was sitting down, and he was watching TV. And all of a sudden, someone opened up his front door and shot him twice. Killed him. And so the person that opened the door was a female cop, a police officer. She killed him. Now, I'm sure you heard about that trial. Her name was Amber Geiger. And the guy that got killed, his name was uh, Botham Jean. And so she said, now she was charged with murder. And so she said she thought that that was her apartment. And when she walked in, she saw him sitting down watching TV. She thought he was an intruder, so she shot him. So she was charged with murder, and she was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Now, what you're about to see right now is the man that got killed, his brother, his younger brother is only 18 years old, and he's on the witness stand at her trial. And while you're watching this, I want you to ask yourself, what would I do if that was me? If you truly are sorry, I know I can speak for myself. I, I forgive you. I know if you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. And I don't think anyone could say it. Again, I'm speaking for myself, not even bad for my family. But I love you just like anyone else. I'm not going to say I hope you rot and die just like my brother did, but I see, I, I personally want the best for you. And I, I wasn't going to ever say this in front of my family or anyone, but I don't even want you to go to jail. I want the best for you. Because I know that's what that's exactly what both of them would want you to do. And the best would be give your life to Christ. Again, I love you as a person. And I don't wish anything bad on you. I don't know if this is possible, but can can I give her a hug, please? Yes. Is forgiveness. Imagine he's 18 years old. His older brother got murdered. That could have been so many issues, so many factors in that case. It was all over the news, all over social media. People were talking about the race issue. Okay, he's a black man. She's a white cop. It could have been sexism stuff. Okay, she's a female. He's a male. That could have been police brutality stuff going on. Okay, the cops and just all kinds of stuff going on. And there were people actually making negative comments about him. Like like it was fake or he shouldn't have done that. But he's only 18 years old. And he chose to forgive the woman that killed his brother. He didn't just forgive her, but he forgave her in the name of Jesus. That's powerful. That's powerful. Listen, when we forgive others, that brings us freedom. Now, you may be in this room right now, and you're not even a believer at all. You might have tried this whole Jesus thing or was trying to figure it out, maybe to see what it is. If that's you, if you're here right now, my advice to you would be, to be born again. 
Receive Jesus as your Savior. Have your sins forgiven. And it's very simple. It's very simple. It's just by faith. And if you're in here right now and you feel God tugging on your heart to make a decision, if that's you, just say this simple prayer after me and just believe it in your heart. Say, God, forgive me of my sin. I repent of my sin. I believe that Jesus died for me. And on the third day, God raised him up. And with this confession, I believe that I am saved. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If that's you, you are an official child of God right now. God has an incredible, God has an incredible future for you, a purpose for you, and an assignment for you. So, now everybody else, what we're going to do now is we're going to get free. We're going to get free. I want everybody, you don't have to stand up, I want everybody to pray this prayer after me, and we're going to get free. We're going to forgive. Now, I want everybody to say this prayer after me and say it with your heart and believe it. Say, Father God. Okay, y'all got to say it better than that. Say it with your chest. Believe it. Say, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Because you have forgiven me, I choose to forgive everyone who sinned against me. I come out of agreement with all bitterness, all anger, all resentment. I command all evil spirits that are tormenting me because of unforgiveness to leave me now in Jesus' name. I'm free. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free in Jesus name. Jesus name. Everybody clap your hands. Lord. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it's a process. This is the beginning of it. As you go on throughout your day, throughout your weeks, you might be in the shower, you might be driving and out of nowhere, you might get a memory of something or someone that did something to you or something that happened from years ago. That's the Holy Spirit bringing that up to your memory so you can forgive that person. You may not have, you don't have to call them. You know, they may not even be alive. It might, they might have been dead by now. But the point is, it's between you and God. You have to forgive them. Because that's what God is going to start doing. That's the process of being free. Now, if you feel the need after this service, if you feel the need to come down and pray longer or more and talk to someone, we're going to have prayer warriors on the left and on the right side of the stage. And you can come down and pray. But listen, if you want to be free, you got to forgive and let it go. If you want to be free, you got to forgive and let it go. Because this is the beginning of the greatest years of our lives. What God is about to do, what he's already doing now, is going to be beyond what you can even imagine or think. And this is part of that preparation process of making us free from the weights of anger and resentment and bitterness so we can be free to flow with what God is doing. Amen? Amen? Awesome. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters that's here right now. Thank you for healing their bodies. Thank you for forgiving their sin. Thank you, Lord, that we are here for you and help us to forgive. Help us to be free even the more. And God, we thank you for doing a new thing in their lives. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching. And we hope you received a life-changing word from God today. Make sure you stay up to date on any new content by subscribing to this channel. Outreach, discipleship, and leadership is our mission here at Rise. And we want you to be a part of it. So click the link in the description below to get connected with us. Also in the link, you'll be able to give your tithe and offering. 
which is being used to grow this ministry that God is using to build this kingdom. God has used our sacrificial giving to completely transform broken people into mighty men and women of God. The Lord is raising the next generation of leaders today. So we thank you so much for your generosity and we will see you next week.